In the last video, we discussed the differences between discrete return LiDAR and full waveform LiDAR and today we will be looking into the space bound LiDAR category. In particular, I'll be touch basing on some of the specifics of the new LiDAR mission by NASA called the NASA Jedi which is intended to add a third dimension to all the major forest ecosystems of the world. I will also be providing you with examples on the kind of products and measurements that can be derived from this type of LiDAR. This way you would be in a position to judge the potential of this global scale LiDAR and see how you can make use of these for your ongoing works. And in the upcoming videos, I'll be further explaining where to find these data, how to subset them and different ways to estimate forest attributes such as canopy height, uh, above ground biomass and so on. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel in case it's your first time. Hey there, this is Mikey and in this channel, I'll be posting daily content on topics ranging from GIS to remote sensing to data visualization to machine learning. Hence, if you are into spatial or data science, consider subscribing to my channel. So previously, we looked into what discrete return and full waveform LiDAR are. We also did talk about airborne and terrestrial laser scanning technologies. If you would like to brush up on those aspects, you can find the links to my previous videos in the description section. Today, let's dig into the spaceborne LiDAR. This is not as popular as the airborne or mobile LiDAR as usually data processing and data storage is very challenging in this case. However, the real power rests in the fact that these can allow us to perform global level analysis. We know that there are already a bunch of satellites circling the orbit taking optical images, but what they are missing out is the structural information and that's what these spaceborne LiDAR data can add. If you are interested in delving deeper into this topic, you can check out the, a link to a research article that talks about the history of spaceborne LiDAR. I have included that in the description section. Rather than just studying the surface of the Earth, spaceborne LiDAR has been used to measure the elevation changes and the vertical distribution of clouds as well as aerosols. By understanding the global distribution of clouds and aerosols, we are in a situation to predict their seasonal and interannual variations and their role in Earth's dynamic climate system. However, being an environmentalist, I'm more interested in the forest measurement capabilities. So, sorry guys, I know I'm just scratching the surface here, but well, this is an intro video. So, if you guys would like me to make any separate video devoting to any specific topic within the spaceborne LiDAR realm, please leave me a comment. Okay, so back to Mother Earth. These spaceborne LiDAR, such as NASA Jedi, has the capability to provide information of the forest landscape structure at really high resolution. And like we saw in my previous video, being a full waveform LiDAR, these sensors measure the time varying signal of the laser pulse and captures multiple elements of the canopy. This way we are able to get a more complete 3D structure of the vegetation and would be able to make more accurate predictive models. As always remember that in case of LiDAR, time is distance and based on the time taken by the pulses along with other factors such as angle, we can estimate forest attributes such as canopy height and also analyze how they vary with elevation, topography, distance, those kind of things. Now, let me give some history lessons. So, the first spacebound LiDAR was launched in um, 2003 by NASA. It's called ISAT. It's actually a short form for ice cloud and land elevation satellite. The main ideology behind this venture was to observe the seasonal and interannual variations in surface elevation resulting from variations in precipitation or snowfall or surface melting. These data were found to be extremely useful in energy balance models and also atmospheric circulation models and were used to predict the impacts of climate anomalies. The spaceborne LiDAR was functional for over 7 years and you can still find this data from the NASA Earth Data website. I shall include links to all the LiDAR missions that I am talking here in the description section so don't worry about that. 
Another important space bone lidar mission was Calypso. For some reason, I found this name very cool. It's actually a short form for Cloud Aerosol LiDAR and Infrared Pathfinder Satellite Observations. The satellite was launched in 2006 and I guess it's still functional. The main goal here was to create vertical profiles of aerosols and clouds and also their properties that account for the uncertainties in Earth's radiation budget. Here, by monitoring aerosols and clouds 24 hours a day, the scientists were in a position to provide better estimate of climate fluctuations. And these have been used with other sen sensors such as radar for building way more comprehensive models. So this is a really hot and interesting topic. I mean the data fusion like when you combine multiple sensors to improve the overall results. I think maybe I should create a video on this topic. So let me know in the comment section if you guys have come across this time and would love to learn more. Okay, so the next is a sibling of ISAT called ISAT-2. This is a more recent and advanced mission aimed at measuring ice sheet elevation and sea ice thickness. This also has a capability to measure land topography, vegetation characteristics and clouds. Here the laser is split into six beams and the accuracy of the measurements for determining global vegetation height is said to be around 3 meter at 1 kilometer spatial resolution. But this is again under the assumption that the canopy cover is less than 75% and we have clear skies which is not always the case. I have played around with this a bit but haven't done anything significant yet so hence I can't provide any strong recommendation however I'm planning to look into it soon and if I do I shall make a separate video on ISAT too because I think it's pretty cool and very helpful. Now the final champion is the NASA's Global Ecosystem Dynamics Investigation which is my favorite but that being said please smash that like button so that it will be like an encouragement for me and I know that you guys are finding value. Come back to NASA's Jedi. Let's, let's try to summarize this in three sentences maximum, okay? Well, NASA Jedi is a high-resolution spaceborne LiDAR situated at the International Space Station, which is capable of capturing vertical structure of the Earth's forests and topography. This was launched in December 2018 and it started collecting data actively starting around, I think, March of 2019. Okay, we have one more sentence left. So, NASA Jedi comprises of three laser with one split into two, thereby producing four beams and there occurs a deflection of the outgoing laser beams, which results in a total of eight ground tracks. Okay, if you're confused now, well, then you're a normal person like me, so that's totally fine. I will try to explain it further with some figures and we'll try to make it more clear. So, let's check this figure. Like I said, I'm still working on my Adobe skills, so therefore don't expect these figures to be picture perfect, but hopefully it should help you get the idea behind. When you look at this image, make sure to tilt your head to the right. Yeah, right. Yeah, otherwise my explanation might confuse you to a point of no return. So let's see what we can notice. So we, you can notice eight tracks here right these are the tracks which i mentioned earlier and also remember me mentioning three laser in total with one being split into two let's say the one laser that was split into two is the cover laser i mean coverage laser and the other two are full power laser in the figure let's say all the black tracks are coverage laser and the ones in orange and yellow are the full power lasers also notice that some track are dotted lines where some are not. This is to represent the deflection happening due to the beam dithering units. So explaining these individual factors are bit beyond the scope of this video. However, I have attached some relevant reading in the description section and would be happy to answer your questions in the comment section. But again, I claim to be no expert in any of this. I'm also a beginner trying to find my way through this amazing technology. And I'm just creating this video so that the people coming behind me will have something to refer to while doing the preliminary later analysis.
actually there are a few webinar kind of videos regarding Jedi by the Jedi team members like Laura and Michelle and the principal investigator Ralph and those videos are super helpful as well as the R Jedi package that my colleague Carlos Silva had made. I will be including the links to those videos as well as the documents in the description section so that you can refer to them as well. Okay, so enough sidetracking, now let's get back to the LiDAR tracks. So as I was saying, we have 8 tracks which are LiDAR beams and in the upcoming videos you will see that while downloading the data we will have an option to select the beams. So basically it's telling that half of the beams have higher power versus half of the beams don't have that much power. And if you want to know more specific, I can tell that the beams ending with 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 1, 0010 000, and 0011 are the coverage beams and the beams ending with 0101, 0110, 000 and 1011 are the full power beams. And if we just take these four footprints or the two tracks here, the distance between the two tracks will be around 600 meter and the individual Jedi footprints which are the pulses represented by the dots here are separated by 60 meter. Yep, the LiDAR footprints are not continuous so that was a trade-off made here. We can overcome some of the limitations here and create wall-to-wall -wall maps of forest attributes through data fusion with other airborne LiDAR or SAR or satellite imagery or any other kind of remote sensing data which gives you more coverage. For a given area, since we might have multiple Jedi measurements over time, it might look something like this here towards the bottom right. Note that the angles of LiDAR will be different Therefore, there won't be any repetitions in terms of exact location, which is in a way good because this way we will have way more continuity. And these individual footprints are of around 25 meter in diameter and data for all the trees within this footprint will be collected. However, the number of trees that you will have depends on the size of the trees. If it's somewhere like in the Amazon, maybe you might have just one tree within one footprint. Additionally, there are also some non-geolocation errors and accuracy related issues which the Jedi team is trying to address in the new level 4 products that they will be releasing soon. I will make another separate video on the quality assessment and quality control part. Therefore, make sure to subscribe if you are interested in using this spaceman later. And based on these measurements, we can estimate things like biomass and then create maps showing how much biomass the forest currently contains. Or something like the change in biomass after a particular disturbance like fire or drought or something like that. In fact, the level 4 product that I had just mentioned, it's actually a footprint level above ground biomass. I think it will be released by March of 2021. Yeah. Another interesting parameter to measure would be the elevation as well as the spatial and temporal distribution of the vegetation structures. For instance, from the aerial imagery, this might look like all the trees are of similar heights. But with LiDAR, we can get a better understanding of the different layer of canopies and also the ground elevation. And this way we can estimate the tree heights with high accuracy which in turn results in better estimation of carbon sequestered by the forest and also their responses to climate change. Along with terrain modeling, we can also monitor plant health and explore how plants respond to droughts and fires and how factors such as topography and elevation influence the, the responses of these plants. This also leads us to our next topic which is water resource management and modeling of water cycling process and then we also have biodiversity conservation and management. This is also one of the major themes of Jedi other than biomass modeling. After estimating the spatial and temporal distribution of canopy structures and canopy profiles, we can evaluate how these are affecting habitat quality and biodiversity. In sum, as the name implies, Jedi makes it possible to understand the horizontal and vertical distribution of ecosystem elements and also their interactions in a better manner. 
and helps us address pressing issues in areas of climate change, biodiversity conservation, water resource management, and many others. Sounds interesting? So that's all for now. Hope you found this video insightful and let me know in the comment section below what you guys are most excited regarding the Spaceborne LiDAR. The next few videos are gonna be on how to download, subset and analyze NASA Jedi data. So stay tuned and also more importantly, don't forget to like this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Till then, ciao. Peace.